In this video, we're going to take a look at Diatrementis Artist Red. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. There is a very interesting amount of tone variation that I get with this pen, but in its lightest tone, it never becomes a pink. It always really does stay red, though a very light red. It does stay red. It shades, which is okay for drawing, but I don't care for reds that shade. Now again, that's for writing, I don't want reds that shade. For drawing, the shade can be sometimes an advantage when you learn to control it. When you can control the shading and you can really make it darker in the areas that you would want to, it allows you to put down some darker areas, bringing that part of the drawing forward, giving you depth within your drawing. So it definitely has the opportunity to really give you some nice advantage in what's happening. But for writing, the real advantage of this ink is its resistance. Now, it is incredibly resistant as an ink, and it was really expected for that. It was marketed for that, and Diatrementis does that very well. It is resistant a lot like their document inks are. Now, it's a little bit lighter than their document red, and I normally don't do a comparison between the two, and I'm not putting the two of them up here, but I can't help but think if I was choosing between this or document red, I would probably choose document red over this one. This isn't bad. I think I just like that one better. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Pelican M1000 with a medium nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the soft fine nib, you can see it is a very, very light red. You're able to read it without any kind of real difficulty, but it is definitely very light. It's got no feather. It's got no spread. It does offer little bits of shading that, depending on how you feel about how this looks, can be very nice. For me, I can pass on it, but I don't think it's bad. I think it's fairly nice. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than the soft fine. It has no feather, has no spread. Yes, it shades very well. And without making it about whether I like shading red inks, I do think it is shading incredibly well and really giving character to what's on the page. It's just a matter of if that's what you want. The music nib is quite a bit darker than the broad or the soft fine. It has no feather, has no spread. It is still shading, though not nearly as much as that broad nib did. The shading is most definitely there. Even though this tends to put it down much uh, wetter, and I was hoping that this would be the opportunity that the shading would go away. Now, looking at the back of the page, we see that there is no ghosting and no bleeding. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib. A Platinum 3776 with a broad nib. A Platinum 3776 with a music nib. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes Steno Notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is, I want to say, just a tad bit darker than we were seeing on the Claire Fontaine. We're not getting any feathering, we're not getting any spread, we have a couple of moments of shade that show up. I feel like on this paper it's giving a little bit of a pink tone, but I think it's the absorbency of the paper that's doing it. And I know in the beginning I said it doesn't become pink. It's this paper that's definitely doing that to the ink. Looking at the broad nib, it is a pink tone. It's the paper doing it. It does have a tiny bit of feathering. Manageable, really, it's very manageable. It doesn't spread. It does have a couple of moments of shading, like if you see the word handy, the H is a little bit darker than the rest of the word. Died is a little bit darker than he right next to it. So it's there, it's nice, it's pink. Looking at the music nib, it is darker than we had with the broad. It does feather a little bit more than the broad. It's a little bit wetter than the broad was. It doesn't really spread, or if it is, I'm not really seeing it. We're not getting any shading, and we're not having a red. We're still having a pink. So this ink, or this ink, this paper is really showing off pink. Looking at the back of the page, especially with the music nib, we see a lot of spots where it went very deep into the paper. The rest, it does start coming through not so much with the soft fine. I would be surprised if it did. So depending on your nib, you might be able to use the back of the page. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad Steno Notebook. Looking at the soft fine, we still have some of that pink tone. It's going on with these uh, cheaper produced papers, though we have quite a bit of the red. The soft fine has no feather. It has no spread. It is shading, although I think it's shading very well. And when it shades dark, it shades and really shows that this is a red ink. I think it looks best as that red and not the pink that we're getting on this paper or the last. Looking at the broad nib, it's still quite a bit of pink with some red going on. Now, we don't really have feathering. We don't have spread. We do have shading, and again, as it's shading, it's going towards that red. It's coming out of pink, and it's really giving us a very nice red tone that's pleasant on this paper. The music nib is darker than the broad. It's not feathering or spreading. It's not shading, but it is a very consistent pink through all of the writing that we're seeing here. Not a fan.
looking at the back of the page, you see that there's quite a bit of ghosting. The ink gets very deep into the paper, but it does not come through. It does not touch the page underneath. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the soft fine, we have the red back. The paper's a little bit better here, and which is weird because I don't feel like I want to knock those other papers, but it's performing much better here. It's still a red, and it's just a very light red, not pink. The soft fine has no feather, no spread. It does shade. I think when it's shading, it's doing it very nicely. If it was a different color, I would very much appreciate what I'm seeing. You're really seeing certain letters definitely getting much darker. You see it in the H in that, the E in we, the H and the E in have. It looks very nice. The broad nib is a bit darker than the soft fine. It has no feather, no spread. It is still shading. It is still red, not pink. So it was only an occurrence on those two papers. Again, the shading here is, if you can like it on red inks, I think does look very good, very pleasant to the eye. Really gives some character here. Looking at the music nib, it is darker than the broad. It has no feather, no spread. It is shading. It is red. It looks very nice. For the most part, we're getting a fairly uniform tone with spots of shading throughout and enough shading to really stand out. Would I like more shading? Yes in an ink, no in a red. Looking at the back of the page, we see a very minor ghosting, so you probably could use the back of the page, and there's no bleed through to touch the page underneath. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Blackstone Yuluru Red. Here is Diatramentus Red Brown. Here is Mont Blanc Burgundy Red. Here is Robert Oster Rubin. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is a red, not a pink. It doesn't feather, doesn't spread. It does shade. When it's shading, it's doing a very nice job of it. Really brings your eye to particular parts of the writing. Really shows some of those downstrokes that may be a little bit heavier. So personality coming through onto the paper. Quite nice. Looking at the broad nib, it is darker than the soft fine. It has no feather, has no spread, has more shading than the soft fine did. Now, I would generally expect more shading from the soft fine because it's a soft nib, but it's also a very dry pen to write. This broad is quite a bit wetter. So we get a very nice red with some decent shading throughout it. Looking at the music nib, it is the darkest tone on the page. There's no feather, no spread, little bits of shading, not a ton of shading, but it shows itself a bit. 
it's kind of a little bit of a translucent red on the page is how I would want to think of it. Not so much that it looks faded, but it looks a little translucent. So kind of interesting. Looking at the back of the page, we see very minor ghosting. You could use the back of the page. It did not come through and touch the page underneath, so it has no bleeding. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is Birmingham Pen Company's Frick Park Fern Hollow Creek. Here is Diamine Twilight. Here is Private Reserve Daphne Blue. Here is Robert Oster Fire and Ice. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the soft fine nib, I think it's doing fairly well. It's really being a red without a problem, not showing any signs of pink. Again, that I did mention it in the beginning and it showed up on some papers, I think more as a reaction. This has some feathering as we would expect. It has a tiny bit of spread, but really minuscule and not really worth worrying about. It doesn't shade. It is a consistent red the entire time. So for that, I consider this to be very good for this paper. Looking at the broad nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the soft fine. We get a tiny bit of feathering. I think it's manageable. We really don't get any spread, which was shocking to me. We have no shading, so it is a good red right here all the way through. Do I wish it would be a little bit darker? Yes, I do. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than the broad, that darker red that I wanted. Here it is. The medium has a tiny bit of feathering, totally under control. A tiny bit of spread, totally under control. No shading. Great, solid performing red all the way through. I think it looks very nice here. So if you're looking for a red ink to go on the office copy paper, here's a winner. Looking at the back of the page, we got no bleed through that touched the page underneath. Sure, we got spotting coming through that looks like it would have. You couldn't use the back of the page, but I think what's happening in its performance on the other side is worth it in trade-off. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? When I'm trying to recommend a pen for this one, it's difficult because they're talking about it as an artist ink, and the shading can be something that is desirable, much more in that case for red than for me writing with red. Now for writing to get a good solid line, I would really want to use a wet or very wet fine or medium nib. Otherwise, you're going to get shading coming through. When I was using the Pelican M1005 with the medium, it is wet, but it wasn't wet enough to sort of get rid of the shading in all of this writing. I wish it was, but you're going to probably need kind of a gusher, but that medium writes more towards broad, so for what that's worth. I hope you got something out of this video, and if you did do all that YouTubery stuff, thanks for watching.